tell uh, the viewers your name, what you do, and uh, that's going to be my first question. Like, you know, introduce yourself and uh, sure. tell us what you do. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, uh, first mm -hmm. and foremost, thank you for, you know, having me. Uh, it's mm -hmm. always a pleasure to have conversations with you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, since we've met, we've talked about yeah, know. God mm -hmm. knows how many things. So mm -hmm. it's always um, a pleasure to talk with you. So uh, my name officially, right? Name mm -hmm. officially is Ulwak Gennaro Aken. Mm -hmm. um, you know, South Sudanese born, um, uh, grew up here in the U.S., grew up in Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. um, this year has been has been kind of interesting. I uh, you know, I used to work uh, uh, for a manufacturing company until the COVID you know hit and kind of you know mm -hmm. threw uh, a monkey wrench so to speak and everything. Um, and so the last uh, year essentially, I've been focused on you know on the book, um, writing it and you know making sure that um, it's uh, you know um, prepared to be published and released um, and and share the story, share the journey, just like yeah. you. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, life has been, has been yeah. very interesting. So yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. So that's what I've you know that's what I've been doing the last couple of months. Uh, and aside from that, of course, you know, I, you know, I have my uh, shift to soccer initiative. Yeah. Um, and that's something you know, it's it's a it's a passion project, mm -hmm. and we've talked about it. We can go more into it, you know, mm -hmm. um, as the conversation goes. But uh, yeah, happy to be here with you. That's amazing. Uh, you, you talk about something that uh, we you know that we are all like similar we're all from south sudan you know and uh we know that south sudan is a country that is ripped by civil war and uh, and to me like every time i get to see south sudanese that are thriving you know when i when i see south sudanese that are making making amazing things in the world you know it kind of gave me so much hope and it actually gave me like the the idea of actually reflecting on my journey and uh, as you say, like you're working on your book, uh, talking about your journey and things like that. We'll talk about that later. But then just reflecting about what is South Sudan to you? Like what is South Sudan to you and me? Like, and I, because like I know more people are going to like listen to this podcast and uh, more people do not understand what is South Sudan. And, and, and I want you to define it in your own way because at the end of the day, more people know of South Sudan because of the war, you know, because of the war, because of the violence, which is not bad because that's a reality of life. We have been, all of us have been displaced of the, by the violence. But I think it's our responsibility as South Sudanese to redefine the way people think about South Sudan, the diaspora, the people that, that were displaced by war. But now we have the second chance. So like, what is South Sudan to you like? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and that's... Uh... That's a loaded question, but I'm glad you asked because, you know, when I think of South Sudan, you know, there's one word that just kind of always pops, you know, um, in my mind. And, the, you know, that word is resilient, you know. Wow. And so South Sudan is resilience in, in the most defining manner that you can use that word. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's the people, you know. I mean, we, we are just very resilient um but we're, we're we're and i don't mean to like just kind of mm. you know like toot our own horn so to speak but we're, uh, we're an amazing mm. group of people um you know no matter where i go whenever i meet other south sudanese th there's always something that's very unique about you know uh who we are as a people obviously mm. as you already mentioned our history and what a lot of people know about us is the civil war which is tragic and, you know, um, just, you know, stained our history, you mm. know, post-independence and all. But, you know, very few other people on the planet can say they've been through such terrible, you know, tragedies and still be able to smile and still be able to hope and wow. still be able to, yeah, mm. move ahead in life and do things like such as yourself. I mean, your story itself is, you know, is not unique to us being South Sudanese, but it's mm. unique to the world. Wow. But there's so, so many mm -hmm. other people like you and I who, mm -hmm. you know, despite the tragedies and despite the difficulties, you know, we still manage to wake up every morning mm -hmm. and, you know, and hope and work towards a brighter future and try to bring the best that we can offer to the world, you know. And wow. so that's that's really what what pops to my mind. And, and but, but you, you just mentioned something that's just uh, that made me think about something special. And, and that's the word resilient. And, 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 and when you think about resilience, I mean, there's resilience everywhere. You know, there's resilience in time of trouble, in time of hard time, in time of like, 
of hardship. And, 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 and because that defines South Sudan is because of the thing that we've been through. And uh, I remember your, your, when you came to America, like how was that journey? You know, especially in your <laughs> family. Yeah, because like you, you just say something that is really, really very important. And I want to understand because we define resiliency in, in different ways. And that's why I was trying to like to connect to you in a way that, okay, you South Sudanese, you're now in America, you have had a journey. But how was that journey? You know, what, what, what was that defining moment of resiliency in your journey? Especially begin with your family, yeah. <laughs> uh, but and that's the thing, right? We, I mean, family for us is our bedrock, right? That's what really drives us. I think that's where a lot of our resilience come from, right? Being able to stick together as a family and a community, often to to you know to um, move past these challenges and these like you know honestly like just sometimes almost like heartbreaking um, situations. And, and to speak about that, you know, as a whole chapter in, in, in you know, my book about, mm. you know, that first um, day of arrival into the U.S. Mm. And, um, you know, for me, having been 10, almost 11 years old, um, a lot of things didn't quite make sense um, in the same way that I now understand them, you know, two decades later. Mm. But, you know, having to leave home and, you know, transition you know from sudan to to egypt and ultimately to the united states mm -hmm. you know it, it had its challenges but at the same time you know it, it's quite different seeing it from a child's point of view versus mm -hmm. like your parents right mm -hmm. you know they're, they're now thrown into you know this this completely different world completely different society and now they have to adjust and manage to you know build their lives basically from the ground mm -hmm. up, ground up with children you know and for us as kids often, you know, we, we might be um, more focused on the excitement and, you know, the kind of the new world that's now available to us. And we kind of, we can get lost into that. And, you know, um, it's quite different than when our parents, you know, are going through it. So for me, that transition was very, very, I think, just kind of eye-opening. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, a lot of it kind of begins to make sense, you know, over time rather than immediately when you, when you first got here. So, I mean, it's a, it was, it was a really interesting time in my, in my life. You went to school here, right? So uh, how, how, like, how is it like, you know, especially coming to America? And this is a question, like a lot of people, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have asked you, like, what is that? What was that cultural difference that changed and so on? I remember like when I first came here, you know, community is the most important thing in our society. And also, you know, in our culture, South Sudanese, so how was that? How was that a difference to you? Well, um, the education system was, you know, um, one of the biggest things that I focused on because mm -hmm. um, initially when we got here, um, we had to switch from learning Arabic yeah. <laughs> to English, and yeah. you know, I, I didn't speak English, and mm -hmm. so you know, for me, it was kind of um, you know very interesting, but at the same time, I felt like it was a challenge, and I'm, I mm -hmm. felt like I'm always up for a challenge, you know. I felt like. I needed to learn the language, you know, why, why, um, you know, why do I need to, I don't know, wait a year or two before I can speak the language, just like the next kid over me, like what, what, you know, what makes them that much more different or special than me. Right. And so for me, I saw it as an opportunity to like, all right, like step up, you know, learn the language. And, and also it's just like a way of making friends, um, a way to feel like, you know, I can achieve this. I can, I can, you know, I can accomplish this as well. So for me, and I write about this, honestly, mm -hmm. some of the most interesting things for me was the fact that, you know, teachers didn't whoop you at school, <laughs> wow. you know? But yeah. Like over here, I was like, wait, hold on. If I, if I do something bad and I get in trouble, in trouble, what do they do? They send me where to the principal's office. That's it. You know? And so for me, I was like, all right, well, that's good. But at the same time, I felt like, you know what? Um, I need to, you know, try my best. I need to, you know, try to catch up. I need to, you know, um, you know, be the best possible student that, that I can be because education is important. And you know this in our community, that's number one, right? Yeah. Education. Mm -hmm. Our parents stress education, the community stress education, and they always see it as a way to, you know, to make a better life for yourself mm -hmm. and for your family and to just be, you know, a better human being overall. So that was always kind of a silver, silver lining, but at the same time, I just felt like, you know what, I needed for my own benefit 
needed to, you know, learn the language, you know, catch up and, and be able to, you know, to uh, make that transition without feeling like I've fallen behind or I don't have the capacity to able, you know, to be able to, um, you know, to transition into into this new life of ours. You're writing a book right now, and uh, you're one of the most, uh, <laughs> I would say, like young South Sudanese who is who I've seen like is writing some really amazing book because like the support that the community has shown you for the last uh, couple of months, uh, it's really amazing. And it's something that I feel like, you know, we needed more. So as um, an author now, like you, you're you writing your, your first book, uh, why did you even think about writing a book? Like why, why book? No, that's a great question. And yeah. uh, that word is going to take a little time to get yeah. used to because <laughs> maybe I'm like, wait, that's, yeah. you know, that's a, uh, you know, that's something I, I would have never imagined, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, to your point, yes, true. And that's, I think, one of the best qualities of our community, right, which is mm-hmm. that we're able to, um, you know, come and support each other and uplift each other. And that really, to me, you know, it's amazing. and It's a blessing. And, um, you know, the reason why I, I felt like I needed to write the book was basically, you um, to share, I think, an important story that mm-hmm. is not um, available mm-hmm. out in the world, right? And what I mean by that is, you know, uh, again, we talk about our history, the civil mm-hmm. war in Sudan and all yep. these things. And people, mm-hmm. a lot of people in the world know, and that's what they know about us, right? That They think um, that's the defining factor about us. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there, you know, that story is multifaceted. And, and for me, I felt like, having been born in Sudan, having mm-hmm. migrated northward rather than south, you know, uh, through Kenya, Uganda, or mm-hmm. um, Ethiopia, I felt it's important to, you know, shine light on the fact that some of our people, mm-hmm. you know, um, were forced to leave the country, but left, you know, through the north. And so that story is important because a lot of kids now, you know, um, don't really understand what our families have to go through for them to end up where they are now. Mm-hmm. And um, so I wanted to share that journey and, and, you know, and shed light on the fact that, you know, the story is different than what a lot of people know. Right. Mm-hmm. Also important because it relates to, you know, um, the community as, as a whole mm-hmm. and how a lot of people who are abroad now um, have to kind of grapple or understand, you know, um, why are we struggling with some of the things that we're struggling with, right? Why are some of our kids, you know, uh, getting into trouble or, you know, feeling lost or, you know, don't really, because they don't have that connection, I feel, um, mm-hmm. with, you know, with, with, with our country or with our people that those of us who were born back home have. And so I wanted to just share that story and, and you know, let them understand that it's okay to, you know, go through these challenges. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to pick yourself up and remember where you come from and remember that, you know, um, your life can be better. Your life can be different if you yourself and your family and your community decide to actually focus on the blessings that we have, which is mm-hmm. an opportunity now to, you know, to, to make something out of our lives. And so I just wanted to share that story to like, you know, it, it's been a struggle. And this is you wow. know, what I've gone through and this is how I manage to you know, try to make the best of the situation. Yeah, I, I just like the way you just you're defining it it's it's not been easy it's not an easy journey you know even for you to write a book to like you know uh it, it's not easy and that's something that i struggle with a lot every time when it come to like our the young people when it come to like you know doing what you love focusing on the job that is going to give that it's going to make you you know successful and to me and you like when i look at you i feel like you know you're one of the most successful people that i know as well because like the definition of success is so different from different people, you know, and to me, I look at success at impact, the impact that you, you make in, in people's life. It mm-hmm. might be two, three, four people that are going to remember you for the, for the rest of their life. And the reason why I'm saying it that is just you looking at, okay, what can I do to your community by creating your own organization, you know, by empowering children in, in, in Sudan and also in Buffalo, you know, in New York, and I mean, everywhere. So, and uh, to the extent, like, you became, you actually won uh, the Luol Deng Foundation, um, was it grant? 
Yeah. Could I mean that? Yo, right. So when, when I look at that, it's just the impact that you are making in, in people's life. And how do you look at that? What actually give you that idea of like, okay, thinking about like, okay, I'm here now. I want to pay it forward. Because you, you think to yourself, like, what is that moment that actually made you think about giving back to your community? And and that's an excellent question. Um, honestly, it, it's a matter of, you know, um, looking back and seeing, you know, um, what others have done for me, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, um, had somebody asked me, what would you be doing 20 years from now? Mm-hmm. You know, when I was in Sudan or, you know, um, Egypt, I would have never guessed like I'd be here, you know, having this conversation with you and Mm -hmm. actually, you know, um, feeling the way I do, which is very gracious um, Mm -hmm. and very hopeful because, you know, life has just an amazing and interesting way of playing out. And so for me, I always reflect on, you know, where have I been in life and who has been there for me and what have they done to add value to my life? And often I see that, you know, people who, um, you know, who have supported me, whether, you know, if they were mentoring me or if they were giving me advice or simply giving me, you know, um, I don't know, $5 for mm-hmm. breakfast that particular day or whatever the case may be. And um, I appreciate those people. And I feel like they were in my life at that particular time for a reason. And I feel like, you know, they contributed or, you know, gave me something um, invaluable at that particular time to mm. help me move along and be where I am today. And so when I reflect, you know, um, with my work with, with, with kids in particular, mm. is that any one of us can have a powerful impact on a child's life. And you never know what that might do for that particular kid at that time, but it has the potential to steer them in the right direction, to help them find something they're passionate about, you know, to um, help them, you know, view the possibilities in life that can improve their lives, their families, wow. whatever it may be. And so, you know, I, I think it's really, really important to do. And often, honestly, as kids, you know, for me, myself, I've gone through it. It's very easy for us sometimes to get distracted or to like, you know, um, end up around the wrong people doing the wrong things. Right. And that can have detrimental uh, impacts on your life that can ruin a kid's life that can, you know, um, derail their future. And so I think as, you know, um, as an adult now, if I can help a child, you know, focus on school or focus on sports or something that they're passionate about, that can, you know, um, help them invest in themselves rather than being out in the street or like, you know, um, hanging out with the wrong crowds, whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. then I feel like I've done something positive. And that's what a lot of people have done for me, honestly. And so I want to, you know, I want to give back and, and, you know, and contribute in a positive way. And that's really the, kind of my driving force, uh, force, to be honest with you. Wow. That's, yeah, man. Uh, thank you for that. That's, that's, that's just amazing. Cause like, I'm just listening. And, and, and that's why like, sometimes when I have conversation like this, I just reflect, I just learn from them. You know, I don't do this in order to like, you know, for other people, I, I do it for myself so that I can learn from it. And then if the other people that can be able to learn or then talk, we're all in it, you know, like, <laughs> like we're all in it so and and that's really very important now you're writing your book uh talking about some incredible like you know topics on your book and um how far is it like uh, well i i want to put my hand on it i want to like wanna... <laughs> <laughs> thank you brother yeah. well you know um so officially next week um mm. the very last week of april yeah. it's released you know released week yeah. so it's officially done. You know, the mm-hmm. manuscript is complete. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's been reviewed thoroughly. Oh, wow. um, and so I'm excited about it because, um, you know, it'll, it'll finally be available to the masses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's my life. I, I put it all out there. What I can remember, come back home, um, what I've gone through in Egypt. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, the majority of my life having been here in this country. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a, uh, man, it's a, uh, you know, the good, bad, ugly, um, a little bit of laughter, a little bit mm-hmm. of sadness, a little mm-hmm. bit of hope, um, but that's life, you know, and, and you know, um, it's something that really forced me out of my comfort zone. As you know, our people are very conservative, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, everything is, you know, keep yeah. it, 
be yourself, you know, emotions as a man is not something that's, you know, uh, particularly, you know, encouraged to be to be shown or, you know, be strong, as our parents mm -hmm. always, you know, teach us to be, especially having, you know, being the oldest in the family, you know, be a good example for your siblings, you know, never show weakness, all these things. But, but sometimes it's more than that. Oh, absolutely. True, true. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. very true. But at the same time, you know, um, it, it was something that forced me to to just kind of be comfortable with who I am as a person, you know, wow. um, and to to be able to just show the world that, you know, humanity is a beautiful thing. It's multifaceted, wow. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's complicated, yeah. but it is just an amazing thing. And so if my story can kind of uh, shed light on, mm -hmm. you know, particularly um, the, the refugee um, experience, you know, for too many people in the world, mm -hmm. our people in particular, but it's something that others can relate to, you know, uh, immigrant, um, you know, having to leave home, mm -hmm. having, you know, having to, to, to leave everything, you know, behind and starting from the ground up. It's not, nobody mm -hmm. chooses where they're born, you know, nobody chooses to which family they're born to and nobody chooses their circumstances in most yeah. cases. Mm -hmm. But what's important is when an opportunity presents itself to be able to, to, you know, to basically build something out of nothing, mm -hmm. then, you know, um, it's an important thing to do. And um, I feel like a lot of people in the world, you know, don't get the chance to do that. But for those of us that do, you know, we have, I think, a, a responsibility to make sure that we make the best out of it and try to just make the world a little bit better you know, with our efforts and, and whatever it is that we can present and whatever it is that we can contribute. Wow. Like, <laughs> I don't want to add anything there because that thing is just, <laughs> it's just, it's just so amazing. So how do you describe your book? Uh, is it like, what category is it in? Because like, is it self-help? Is it like? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, so, you know, it's a memoir, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, a, um, a nonfiction, you know, mm -hmm. kind of collection of stories, mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, when you get to read it, you know, maybe we'll have a conversation okay. again. Exactly. exactly yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's <laughs> what I'm trying to, yeah, that's why I, I want to, I want to have, I want to have people get a highlight of your book. And that's, oh, why I'm, that's why I'm not getting into like real topic there. Cause this is, this is just so amazing because like, I really just want us to talk about like, you know, what inspired you, like, you know, how the book is going, when we're going right. to have it and talk about South Sudan because we are a very great community, man. Like, you know, like we just have so much that we can offer to other communities, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's why like, you know, it's always good for, uh, for me to have someone like you on my, on my podcast so that the rest of the world can be able to know like who we are, you know, uh, what we can do, we can be able to be anybody, authors, you know, um, video game designers, you know. <laughs> but, but I have a really quick question, like, how did you find your passion? Man, that, <laughs> the questions you're asking, you, you know, you sure these are not scripted? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, uh, these are, man, you, you're, you're, you're asking excellent questions, brother. Mm -hmm. And again, as I said, you know, um, this conversation with you is going to be what it is. It's going to be fluent. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to I'm going to share with you my thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. as yeah. they are. And honestly, man, it's just it's those moments where you just find inspiration um, out of nowhere. You know, it might mm -hmm. be a conversation that I've had, you know, with my mom or like a phone call that I had with my grandfather or like with my wow. friends that we're talking and reflecting on these things. And those moments, honestly, it, it's kind of like a, a spark that lights a fire at that particular time. So. With the book itself, it's something that I started working on, believe it or not, um, well over 10 years ago, you know? Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I actually, um, it's a secret, I don't tell nobody, but yeah. <laughs> I used to struggle with, you know, my reading or writing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking is not an issue, as you can tell, I could talk a lot, but man, I, you know, I used to struggle mm -hmm. with articulating my thoughts on paper. And for me, I used writing as a way to kind of uh, help me fine tune that skill you know wow. uh, this is college years you know I'm, i was wow. like a junior or something um and so i started writing to help me focus and help me get my thoughts across on paper when you know when i didn't have the opportunity to kind of speak it mm -hmm. and so um with that said 
the best things or like the things I found easiest to articulate on paper were like stories that I remember from back home, you know, or things about soccer or mm -hmm. you know, memories from, you know, family moments and these things that were just um, very powerful. And so, you know, I, I would be writing a paper, uh, you know, I don't know, on like political theory or something like that. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty boring. Um, and then I would just remember like a moment when I used to um, hang out with my friends, you know, used to play soccer on the hot mm -hmm. Sudan desert. And I was like, mm -hmm. yo, this, this was a lot of fun. Like, you know, I remember this and then the third and I would end up writing like mm -hmm. 10 pages about that story. And so for me, I was like, man, this is, you know, this, this is kind of cool. And it just brought back like this nostalgic feelings and and just the amazing uh, moments that were, you know, uh, too far and few in between, the, you know, the challenges that that mm -hmm. growing up back home presented. But ultimately, you know, after a while, I was like, man, if I were to ever actually sit down and try to make this um, something that that's presentable, I can probably mm -hmm. write a book. And so that thought just kind of lingered for a long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And finally, last year, you know, when the pandemic hit, I found myself, you know, um, at home, jobless, you know, not able to um, do anything really because of, mm. you know, the, the, the situations we were in. Mm. And so I said, you know what, let me uh, let me see if I could actually review this and make this, you know, something uh, yeah, yeah. In, into a book. And that's really kind of uh, how it snowballed into what it is today. Wow. That's 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 really amazing, man. I I just like that because I know you're doing what you love, and I always tell people that you know we live in a society, not even a society, in a generation where doing what you love matters so much, and and that's why like the good thing about doing what you love is just you put in the time, you know, you 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 always there, you know, because it just gives an idea of like it's more than just waking up in the morning and finding yourself in a space where you were dreaming of being, you got to work for it. You got to mm. put in the work. And, 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 and for you to say that you've been working on this book for the last, you know, 10 years, you know, trying to like put thoughts together to be able to reach where you are today. That's progress. That's something you've been like, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's an amazing opportunity for you to like keep doing. And I, I can't wait to read the book and I can't wait to like, you know, uh, talk more about it. And um, what are your five, sorry, five is a lot. Uh, what are your top three things that we will advise somebody, an underdog or somebody who is thinking to write a book to do? Your top three advice. Mm. Well, that's, uh, I'm glad you said yeah. uh, three instead of five. <laughs> Uh, but honestly, I mean, you know, I think um, knowing your motivation for why it is that you're taking on such a project is a powerful first tool to have because, you know, the process itself, it's a, it's a roller coaster, you know, mm -hmm. you might find yourself sometimes just kind of, you know, um, at a loss not knowing what to write, what the next mm -hmm. word is going to be, what's the next, you know, sentence, letter. And so when you have your motivations and you know why it is you're doing, what it is, you know, why it is you're doing what you're doing in, in terms of writing, then that's always something that you can kind of fall back on. Um, secondly, I think um, you need to be able to feel comfortable and at liberty to put on paper what you want to put on paper, you know? Mm -hmm. um, not, yeah, it, it can be tough sometimes because, you know, the thoughts of, all right, what people might think, you know, when they read this um, can be discouraging and, you know, it can make you second guess yourself, but you mm -hmm. need to, you know, kind of um, let that go and just feel at liberty to, because it's being creative, right? It's kind of like you with your video game, mm -hmm. you know, you need to be able to feel at liberty to, you know, exactly. write mm -hmm. that next code, right? And, and decide, you know, uh, what a player can, cannot do, etc. So that's, I think, um, uh, two things that are absolutely crucial. And then lastly, honestly, um, you need to be able to believe that it's something that you can accomplish, something that you can do, because 
you know, as I can, as I kept writing, I was, you know, sometimes thinking like, man, um, will I really be able to do this? You know, um, will I, will I be able to um, articulate enough thoughts and share enough stories and kind of, um, you know, put them all together to create a presentable, you know, work of literature. Um, so those three things, I think, really go a long way. And obviously, as a creative, um, it's doing something that nobody has probably done before, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're writing a book that somebody else has already written, nobody does that. <laughs> so you need to you need to be able to, to feel and be proud of yourself. You know, it's like, it's, uh, it's like anything in life, you know, it could be something very small, it could be something very big. But if it's, you know, it's your work, it's, um, it's, you know, your, your, your self worth, really, it's, mm -hmm. it's your purpose. Mm -hmm. And you, you need to be able to, to accept that and, and be content with it. And honestly, those, those were like the three major things that kind of helped me, you know, chuck along and, and push to this very point. And enjoy the journey. As you're crying. Yeah, yeah. You know, just <laughs> enjoy the journey of feeling off like, oh, I don't have the advice. <laughs> oh, I am like, you know, it's so hard, you know, never give up. Like, you oh, know, absolutely. just enjoy, enjoy, like, enjoy the process of even failing. Enjoy it because like That's you can repeat the same thing every time and then you absolutely. keep improve. It's it's a journey. You've been working on this for like 10 years. I don't know if I can do that, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks so much. Those are really good. Um, and I, I will, I will keep those advice and, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to say I'm not, I'm not going to write a book one day. I'm not going to say <laughs> I'm going to write, but like, those are really amazing advice that will help me as Luol to write my book one day. And I'm pretty sure the people that are listening can be able to like be in that position to be able to like use this time, use this knowledge And I can't wait to bring you back again, man. Like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anytime, brother. Thank you for yeah. having me. And, yeah. uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always, you know, happy to have these conversations with you. Yeah. And just kind of, you know, and, and just be, you know, be who we are and, yeah. and, and share our stories, our experiences and advice. I mean, it, it, uh, I think um, that's, that's really the value that we bring to each other. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it makes us all better. So thank you. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the platform mm -hmm. and I look forward to it. And for sure, like, and a big shout out to, because I don't, I don't want to, this is not like a more a sponsored shout out. It's, <laughs> it's a shout out that means so much to me that actually helped me and you get to know each other. And that is South Sudan United. It's an amazing platform that, You know, uh, South Sudan United is um, it's an amazing organization that bring all the South Sudanese in the diaspora together, even some of them that come actually from South Sudan. And it helped us to connect as uh, entrepreneurs, as South Sudanese, and really big shout out to them. I can't wait to like for the pandemic to like, you know, end soon so we can do another one, you know, amazing work by Luolding Foundation. Like, as I say, this is not a, a sponsored shout out. It's just something that I feel like we need to do more in, in our community. We need to do more in different communities. And when such kind of organization are there to help us, like South Sudan Unite, you know, amazing people behind them. And it, it's just amazing. So yeah, I, I wouldn't have this conversation without a platform right, like that. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And I can't wait to like talk with you soon. <laughs> yeah, thank you, brother. Bye.